reaching the jugular. So how close did Clint Malarcha come to dying? To find out, our scientists create a simple experiment. This plastic container is filled with 10 pints of simulated blood, which is, amazingly, all the blood we have in our bodies. The container is pressurized at 18 PSI, which represents the average amount of blood pressure in our bodies. The idea is to puncture it, to see just how quickly we can lose a critical and fatal amount of blood. Here we go. you lose 15 percent of your blood volume your heart will start to pound in your chest in order to keep up and keep your blood pressure up after you've lost 30 percent of your blood volume your heart will no longer be able to keep up and your blood pressure will start to drop when you hit 40 percent of your blood volume then you're really in trouble and you may start to feel faint not long after that you'll black out more than 40 percent of your blood volume and the body will not be able to survive The time it takes for your body to bleed out, with a wound like Clint's, two minutes and 16 seconds. That's a bleed out. You'd be dead. So how did he survive? With 10% of his blood already spilled on the ice, a hero emerged. Although it must have seemed like a lifetime, Buffalo's trainer Jim Pizzatelli was at Clint's side in a flash, only 14 seconds after the accident. And Pizzatelli, a former Vietnam Army medic, immediately reached into Malarchek's neck and pinched off the bleeding. The most important thing that you can do in the case of a lacerated artery or a vein is to put pressure on that vein. In this case, the trainer really saved Clint's life by putting pressure on that vein. Clint ended up getting over 300 stitches in an emergency operation, walked out of the hospital in two days, and back onto the ice in time for the playoffs. But his near-death experience haunted him for months. I'd have nightmares of that skate coming up. I'd wake up and just sit straight up in bed, boom, and it's like, just like in the movies, you know, you're like breathing hard and going, wow, gee, oh, uh, just, okay, it's a dream, it didn't happen again, you know, the, all these things. And chances are, it won't happen again, at least not to a goalie. After the Malarchuk incident, the National Hockey League passed a rule requiring all goalies to wear neck protectors. We've already shown you some injuries that are hard to watch. Next, we'll reveal the roots of empathy. Why it's actually painful to see someone else get hurt. Oh! And what about when you see yourself get hurt? When we return, we'll see how Clint Malarchuk responds when he watches the footage of the worst day of his life. Sports Science, Field Warriors, returns in a moment. Face it, sports have a powerful effect on our emotions. From jubilation to misery and all points in between. And when we see an athlete get injured, we say we can feel their pain. Is that really possible? Can we actually feel someone else's pain? Get ready for the empathy test. In order to test empathy, you need three things. Something that provokes a reaction, someone to react, and a way to measure it. Our lab rats for this experiment are professional athletes who all agreed to have their heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory functions, and electrodermal responses monitored. Then, they'll sit down in this chair and watch a video we've created that features everything from spectacular highlights to gruesome injuries, all things that are guaranteed to provoke a response. 
These EDR finger cups reveal even minute levels of stress. They'll guarantee that our volunteers can't hide their real emotions when exposed to this brutal visual barrage. It's almost one of those things where you want to look away from it. Oh, man! Oh, it's just a thing when you like, you just think about it. You know how pain feels, so if your leg is twisted this way, you're like, man. Oh, what a shot by Devin. Jeff Gordon got knocked right You know, obviously you could feel the pain that they're experiencing. In order to raise the empathy bar a little higher, we decided to shoot a little lower, as there is one physical violation that tends to evoke a surefire response. Oh, oh. As we got to the groin injuries, oh, oh. the hits to the nuts, basically, all the men responded quite heavily on all three factors. Electrodermal, breathing, pulse, everything. <laughs> It's not funny, but it, it often is funny. We can all empathize how painful it is. So can we really feel someone else's pain? <sighs> yes, we can. And scientists have identified exactly how and why we empathize with others. Here at UCLA's Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation Lab, Dr. Marco Iacoboni and his associates are studying something called mirror neurons. Subjects are placed inside a powerful MRI and shown images by way of special goggles. Right now he's looking at clips of people that are doing just very simple actions and the idea is to activate these mirror neurons and what we found in our research is that the more you activate these brain regions, the more you tend to feel what other people are feeling. In other words, when we witness something, these mirror neurons fire, telling the brain and the body that what we're watching is actually happening to us. This is why it's so hard to watch some of these injuries. In a sense, we really do feel someone else's pain. Remember the old expression of President Clinton, I feel your pain. You really do, and you do it with mirror neurons. On average, for the athletes we monitored, respiratory rate increased 25%, and pulse rates skyrocketed as much as 70%. So we can, in fact, feel someone else's pain. The question is, can you feel your own pain again? To find out, we brought back goalie Clint Malarchuk. We had him take the long walk down the catwalk to sit in the empathy chair. We wire him up to see how he reacts when forced to watch the video of the worst day of his life. I've seen it so many times. I think I've just become numb to it almost. I, I don't feel much emotion, not, not like it used to be. He may think he's not reacting, but our sensors reveal the reality underneath his cool exterior. He started out being measured pretty calm, and then once he got to his own video, it starts spiking. It just went through the roof. His respiration climbed 30%. Electrodermal response increased 40%, and his pulse jumped almost 100%, from 62 beats per minute to 120 beats per minute. Consciously, Clint feels like he's in control of his emotions, but unconsciously, when we see someone get hurt, an empathic response is an involuntary neurological impulse deep within the brain. And it's these mirror neurons that allow us to share the pains, as well as the pleasures, of athletes at play. Whenever athletes take the field, they know there's a chance they'll get hurt and will feel their pain and cheer them back to their feet. But when they can't go on and finally have to leave the field, they'll do their best to get back as soon as they can because there's nothing more painful than sitting on the sidelines for these field warriors.
My name is Boss Rutten, and I'm a professional spleen blaster. Buster. <laughs> I'm Boss Rutten, and I'm a professional spleen blaster. One more. Come back, come back. I'm Boss Rutten, and I'm a professional spleen blaster. <laughs> <laughs> spleen blaster!